Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Uh, Today is our topic of discussion, Mallory Weiss Syndrome and then Borgheim Syndrome. So first, what is mean by Mallory Weiss Syndrome? Mallory Weiss Syndrome, it is a, one of the commonest cause for the uh, upper GI bleeding. So mean same time, Borgheim also, these are the two syndromes, uh, one of the cause for the upper GI bleeding. So what is, what is happening in Mallory, Mallory Weiss Syndrome? First one, it is a longitudinal mucosal tear at the gastroesophageal junction. Two major important things we have to note down. First one, it is a longitudinal mucosal tear. Mucosal tear. Second one, where it is occurring exactly at the gastroesophageal junction. So in this image, we can see that that red portion. So this is the longitudinal tear. Tear. So the term we told is a mucosal tear. Before that, mucosa means first we have to know about the what are the layers we have in a, whether the esophagus or stomach. Then only we can understand where the uh, tear is occurring. First, this is what our mucosal layer. So, I am going inner to outer. Okay. So, consider this is the esophagus means. So, here this is, it is what your mucosal layer followed by we have a submucosa layer. So, in submucosa only we have all our blood vessels and then we have our lymphatic drainage everything that will present submucosal layer. So, mucosa and then submucosa followed by we have a muscular layer, longitudinal circular muscle, muscular layer is there right. So, third one is a muscular layer. So, the outer portion is a serosa layer, serosa okay. So, mucosa, submucosa, muscular layer, final one is a serosa layer. So, here what we told, it is a longitudinal tear in the mucosal area. So, the first layer, the innermost layer, there will be a problem in the innermost layer, the location is gastroesophageal junction. Remember, the mainly in Mallory Weiss syndrome, mainly it will affect only the mucosal layer. It won't extend or it won't affect the submucosa or muscular or serosa layer. So, this is a only affecting the mucosal layer. The commonest cause is a alcoholic binge drinking, diabetic ketoacidosis. Some of the chemotherapy uh, drugs also will causing the Mallory Weiss syndrome. Apart from this, cuffing and then seizure also reported uh, causes. So, those are the things also reported causes. So, coming into Barghav syndrome, what is meant by Barghav syndrome? The same thing only that in Mallory Weiss syndrome, what we told it will only affect the mucosa layer, right? But here, what will happen? It will affect the entire region. So, uh, entire thickness of the wall it will affect. Means it will affect the mucosa, it will affect the submucosa, it will affect the uh, your muscular layer. Means same time it will affect the outer outer covering that is a serosa layer also it will affect. So if it is affecting the whole layer means what will happen? It will create a one pathway, right? So, so it will create a one pathway or it will create, it will uh, make a one perforation that is called the bar have syndrome. So, in this image also you can see this is the true lumen means this is a, your esophagus, this is the perforation. So, that is what happening in the or bar have syndrome. So, this bar have syndrome uh, you can correlate with your uh, aortic dissection. So, there also because of that increased pressure, the, the tunica intima layer there will be a false lumen will create right. The same thing only, the same uh, concept only because of that increased pressure, here the problem that uh, another lumen will create that is called the perforation. Okay, the commonest cause here also present with the after a large meal that includes the alcohol consumption. Okay. So, assessment point. So, again one more thing. So, this passage, so he will told the perforation. Because of that perforation, whatever content that is in the, so if the perforation occur in the thorax region means, so it, the, the mediastinal content can enter into the esophagus, means same time esophageal content. So whatever things we are having through the esophagus that can travel into the mediastinal area. So that might be a air or that might be a food or that might be a water, whatever thing. So in and out movement is possible in this case of Borghev syndrome, but Mallory syndrome that won't occur. So, assessment point, 
so we can classify into two categories first one mallory waves so if you are comparing them that will be easy second one borghav syndrome right borghav syndrome in both condition vomiting will be there vomiting will present in both condition okay second thing pain so where the pain will occur so in mallory waves syndrome mainly we told it will be in a esophageal gastric at the gastroesophageal junction so the pain will be in a epigastric region am i right so borghav syndrome mainly the person will feel pain in the upper chest upper chest okay upper chest region is the majority of the incident noted in the borghav syndrome here that uh, provoking uh, which uh, uh, provoking factor for the pain is uh, if the person is swallowing means that will provoke the pain so the nature of the pain the intensity of the pain will increase okay this is the one of the thing third one regarding the associated symptoms so here in the case of mallory waves syndrome the person may have a um, shock and then the person may go into the epigastric pain hematemesis melina these are the some commonest uh, associated symptom in a mallory waves syndrome coming into borghav syndrome because of that so we told uh, because of that perforation the content may can travel into in and out so that the person may develop into sepsis hypotension and then uh, if any inflammation happen in the mediastinum means mediastinitis fever so these are the things some commonest clinical feature that associated feature that occur in the borghav syndrome coming into next major important thing that is the hemorrhage okay so in mallory waves syndrome the hemorrhage waves it can be a mild so based on the tear based on that length of the tear it can be mild to severe bleeding will be there but in the case of borghav syndrome there will be a mild bleeding only we can note so bleeding how we can note through the hematemesis right if it is uh, coming upward means hematemesis if it is going uh, lower uh, excreted through the anal carotid anal canal means then we can notify the melina okay black black tarry stool melina so that is the way we can assess so in uh, mallory waves syndrome that will be a mild to severe so that uh, bleeding range will be differ from the or uh, length of the uh, tear or duration of tear coming into borghav syndrome here we can see the mild bleeding only why means we told there is a perforation again this perforation may disrupt the bleeding into the mediastinal or into the peritoneal cavity okay because of that uh, our cavity it can go into the other region and through the uh, cavity it can uh, divert into the other part so the minimal bleeding we can get in in the borghav syndrome either through the melina or either through the hematemesis so these are the some assessment point we have to keep in mind first one we told about the vomiting both condition vomiting will be there and then coming into pain waves mallory waves syndrome mainly the person will notify in the epigastric region in borghav syndrome that will be in a upper chest region uh, once after swallowing the person that uh, uh, intensity of the pain will increase and then coming into associated symptom here also the both condition we can notify the hematemesis and then melina along with in borghav syndrome because of that hypotension sepsis uh, because of that sepsis the person may develop into hypotension and then fever mediastinitis everything and then hemorrhage part the major important thing in mallory waves syndrome it can vary from mild to severe but in borghav syndrome it will be in a mild in nature so the same thing only what we told in assessment part the same thing only here we kept so management part again here also uh, we have to first define whether the person is stable or unstable what we discussed in the last part the same thing we have to follow in in pre hospital what we are majorly main uh, focusing means we have to obtain a two large bore iv cannula so if the person indicated for any mtp massive transfusion protocol means so while obtaining cannula itself we can collect the sample so we can uh, hand over to the uh, definitive care thereby uh, they can process very easily fastly mean the same time uh, in a pre hospital region so volume resuscitation also we can uh, go for in selected cases early airway management also recommended so again coming into volume resuscitation so already the person in a bleeding uh, the hemoglobin level will be in a low the carrier of the oxygen will be in a low state so additionally 
So while giving a volume resuscitation, we should not exceed more than 1 litre. So 1 litre is upper limit that is a recommended le uh, level in uh, adult cases. So we should not exceed the limit. So based on the person condition, so still you, more than 1 litre also if the person is still persists in hypotensive, still you should not administer the fluid. Why means it is it leads to the coagulopathy or uh, any coagulation disorder also it will lead to mean the same things. So it will cause the dilutional that um, the same thing will dilutional coagulopathy. It will leads to the already the hemoglobin is, uh, level is low. So if you are adding more and more fluid means again the carrier level will be in a reduced the volume level will be in an increased manner that is why the judicial fluid administration even in a uh, shock or even in a, your um, bleeding cases that is uh, most considerable considerable factor and then coming into uh, Barghav syndrome here also the management related with an sepsis is one of the additional factor we have to remember because that non-sterile content, so food material, water things that will get into the circulation. So here the management of sepsis, again sepsis means our uh, antibiotic management and then we have to go for the uh, some other fluid resuscitation. If it is uh, not resolving with the fluid resuscitation means then we are going with an our uh, vasoactive medication like noradrenaline, vasopressors, those are things also we have to keep in mind. And then in hospital management, mainly for Barrier syndrome, we are going with an endoscopic repair for the tear and then volume resuscitation antibiotics to manage the infection. So in hospital ways, so here we have a still more advantage like we have a, a blood products that also we can go for. So additionally, what we can do in a pre-hospital along with volume resuscitation sepsis management, we can do the proton pump incubators. So proton pump incubator that we are all we are aware about the omeprazole, pantoprazole. So what it is doing, what is doing, uh, that, what is the action of proton pump incubator in this uh, bleeding cases? Mainly our clot formation from the blade, platelet aggregation that will depend upon the pH is more than 6, okay. pH is more than 6 means, so it should be it should not be in a acidic state again a ph 6 uh, if it is a less ph means that is indicating more acidoic nature right so whenever so ph is greater than 6 then only the clot formation uh, will occur so what is doing so what is the action of proton pump incubator it will incubit or it will block the hydrochloric acid secretion that is the action of our proton pump incubator right so if it is blocking means what will happen that hcl secretion will reduce so hcl secretion reduce means so the ph level won't fall below the 6 so that is the ideal concept dosage wise so omeprazole 80 milligrams or pantoprazole also we can use 80 milligrams iv bolus followed by infusion of 8 milligrams per hour so this 80 uh, milligram bolus we can go uh, administer in the pre-hospital scenario. And then come, so second one is a somatostatin. So octreotide is one of the drug of choice in the uh, somatostatin is one of the drug. It will have a three major function. First one it will incubate the secretion of gastric acid. It will reduce the flow to the gastrointestinal mucosa. Third one it will cause the vasoconstriction in the splanchnic Splanchnic vessels, it will cause the vasoconstriction. So, these are the three major functions of our octreotide or somatostatin. So, the dosage wise 50 micrograms bolus we have to administer followed by we have to uh, continuous infusion up to 25 to 50 micrograms per hour. Availability wise it will be in a 100 microgram per ml. So third one is a anti-emetic if it is recommended so we told vomiting is the most common one. So anti-emetic like uh, andam cetron 4 mg we can go or prokinetic agents like uh, uh, metaclopromide also we can go for. And then final one management is a uh, balloon tamponade it is one of the uh, device that helps into temporary management for the upper GI bleed. So again uh, the various article they are referring uh, 50 to 90 percentage. Uh, effectiveness is there with this device. So in this device, the name of the device is SPT, Sankistin Blackmore Tube, Sankistin Blackmore Tube, so SPT. So this device have a three major functions. First one, 
it have a three major portions so it have a first one here we have a gastric balloon here we have a esophageal balloon we have a third one we have a suction port also so here you can see that the red portion is called the esophageal balloon and then this yellow portion is our uh, gastric balloon this portion is for the for aspiration gastric aspiration port so what it will do so you can blindly insert before that we have to secure the airway uh, with the endotracheal tube then we have to lubricate and then we have to insert and then after insertion we have to dilate the balloon so thereby it will uh, temper it will compress that vein so mainly it will useful in the esophageal varices and then our barrow syndrome and then uh, malady ways also we can use so mainly but most effectively in the esophageal varices cases so it will what it will do it will compress the vessels thereby it will prevent that uh, bleeding so uh, the same thing only what we are doing in a uh, bleeding cases so externally we will compress right the same thing only what we are doing in the spt tube this is one of the um, uh, advantages in the pre hospital if we have means we can use so do your best shalom